الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أعوذ بكلمات الله تعالى من شر ما هلك أعوذ بكلمات الله تعالى من كل شيطان وآما ومن كل أين اللاما بسم الله الذي لا يضر ما إثمه شق في الأرض ولا في ثماه وهو السميع العليم لا نريد منكم جزاء ولا شكورا إننا نأفه من ربنا يوما أبوسا كم طريرا يوم لا تملك نفس لنفس إشيها والأمر يوم إذ لله فدن دم عليهم ربكم بذنبهم فسواها ولا يهاف أكباها ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد لا إله إلا الله وعده لا شريك له له الملك وله الأمد وهو على كل شيء كبير سبحان الله وبأمنه سبحان الله العظيم سبوه القدوس رب الملائكة والروح وجماعة because a lot of companies are media as you can see we are here live with Sheikh Muhammad Awal at Zaytun today is going to be a lot of uh, Islam Islam and Christianity a lot of things are about that one so as you are here you can share this program make sure you share this program on your page this is going to be extraordinary program a lot of people always call out they need a they need some questions to be answered through the Christians and all this what is going on in the global world but today, Alhamdulillah, we were able to have Sheikh Mohammed our life here in New York City, Yankees. Inshallah. So make sure you share this program. This is a very important program. If you have any questions, we you can ask any questions that you think that we're going to take. Maybe we're going to give out a number for people to call to. Maybe about few people to call to ask Sheikh any questions between Christians and the Muslims, Inshallah. So as we can go, Inshallah, we're going to introduce Sheikh first. And you see, and after that, we have some questions that we're going to ask Sheikh, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa sallamatullahi wa ta'ala wa barakatuh. Okay, Sheikh, uh, as you can see, uh, there's a lot of questions that today we want to ask. Yes. It's a lot of questions, inshallah. We have about five to six questions, inshallah. First question, Sheikh, um, mm. clearly you have dedicated your whole life for the spreading of Islam. What do you see the future of Dawah in the next 10 years, inshallah, Sheikh? الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى كل ملائكة المقربين وعلى إباد الله سبحانه وتعالى مرحبا 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 very very different compared to the way we do it back in Africa because here they're looking for empirical evidence they want fact they want something that they can hold on to and so the the Dawa methodology is absolutely different when I came here in 1984 back then Dawa is a little bit tough and we have few masjid in New York City but right now as you know very well we are boasting with about 2,000 masjid those are the ones that the government have uh, actually you know cleared on right? we have others on the sidewalk this and that 
And so da'wah really is taking shape. This is not me making that statement. Allah said, وَالَّذِي أَرْسَلَ رَسُولَهُ بِالْهُدَى وَدِينِ الْحَقِّ He's Allah who sent his messenger with the guidance and the religion of truth. And that religion will supersede each and every you know, uh, religion. And that is what we are seeing. So I'm seeing in the next 10 years what Islam is going to be on a level par excellence where people are otherwise not thinking about. So really we have uh, work to do anyway to make sure that we reach that level, inshallah. Inshallah. Uh, next question is Sheik. Doing to the COVID-19 lockdown, Right. How you channel your dawa to reach the targeted populations globally? Absolutely. You know, because of the COVID-19, I couldn't travel so much. Uh, I was in Africa when the COVID-19 actually, you know, uh, started. And so I was stuck for eight months. I came, as you know, like 10 days ago. Uh, we can't stop dawa just because COVID-19. You know, to us, COVID-19 also is a dawa. It yeah. is something that have come into the community of the world so we could look back and make some correction and make some adjustment and come to terms with that which God Almighty has asked us to do. Yeah. There is one verse in the Quran, if I may quote it and then make some translation. Yeah, sure. Allah said, Zahar al-Fasad fil barru wal bakhar bima kasabat aydin nasa li yazukahum ba'adan ladhi amilu la'allahum yarji'un there is so much wickedness and violence and atrocities and killing and maiming have made the whole world even on top of the ocean because of what mankind's hand have sent forth so allah sent us a plague a disease a disaster so that we will feel the taste and then maybe that will make us correct our mistakes and come back to allah once you come back to him, his hand is open. Like we say, awa awa too. Allah will take us back when we come. So this is something that Allah has set up. I don't think somebody, you could say somebody set it up, somebody do it, some, 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 some laboratory. Well, you could say whatever you want. Nothing happened by the will and knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything has set up. So this is the setup that Allah has done, mashallah. In the face of uh, COVID-19, what I do is I limit myself to going on radio. So when I was in Africa, I went to so many radio stations because that's the only place I can reach a lot of people. And then I did so many uh, WhatsApp and Facebook and uh, social media. You know, uh, you are, you, and you're a man of social media, you know very well. So that's, that's the part that I, I, I intensify my, you know, channel my, you know, uh, propagation on top of that media, inshallah. All right, Jack, uh, next question is, uh, a lot of people who normally ask, yes. are the Muslims mm. enemies of Jesus Christ? <laughs> Hi Anifa, absolutely not. Anyone who asks that question does not know uh, either he's a Christian, he doesn't know uh, Christianity or Islam very well. How could I be an enemy when in the Quran I have a chapter dedicated for the mother of Jesus? Mm, not the mother of Muhammad, Swatul Maryam. If I read that verse, I cry. The elevation that Allah has given her. How can I be against Jesus when my uncle's name is Esau, my, my wife's name is Maryam, and, and we name these names. We can't even say Esau unless we say alayhi salatu was salam. Mm -hmm. Peace and Allah, blessing be upon him. No. As opposed to Jesus and that's like that. How can I hate Jesus when in fact Allah have glorified him in the Quran? Mm -hmm. How can I hate Jesus? Look, we love Jesus so much. We love him so much. And the Quran makes us to love him so much. Not reading the Bible, the Quran makes us to love Jesus so much. And we are trying to act the way he acted. We pray the way he prayed. We eat the way he eat. We walk the way he walk. And we worship the way he worship. So really, if there is anyone that could be an enemy of uh, Jesus Christ, that shouldn't be Muslim. We are very close to him. He said, don't eat shwan. We don't eat no shwan. He said, put on a long gap and, 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 and a headgear. We do the same thing. He said, leave beard. We leave beard. And he bought a fall down on his face. In frustration, he prayed to God. We do the same thing. And look, that's what we do. How can we be enemies of Jesus? Even his mother. Look at the Muslim woman and look at Mary. The way she's dressed, that's how the Muslim woman dressed. We are, if Christianity is the loving religion of Jesus Christ, then the Muslims are in a position to say we are more Christians than the Christians the Christian themselves. Christian. So clearly we love him. Ah, okay, Shaq, uh, we got uh, question number four. Okay, the Christians are still waiting for the comforter, but the Muslims are saying that Muhammad is the comforter. What is your response on that? Well, uh, what is the comforter? We have to understand what is the comforter, what is the uh, what is the Holy Spirit, what is the... Uh, Comforter is someone that comes along and comforts you and me. Mm -hmm. Comforter is someone that is the go between God Almighty and the community. He right. comforts, they say, don't do this, do this, and do that. He comforts, that's a comforter. Or the spirit of truth. Spirit of truth. Prophets are all spirited inclined. 
Anyone that does the, the, uh, the work of God, prophet, all of them are spirited inclined. They have the spirit of God. So when Jesus said, if I go, the comforter will come after me. That means he was not there. That comforter was not there when he was speaking. If I go, he will come. If I don't go, he won't come. I'm quoting Mark 16 verse 7. He said, if I don't go, he won't come. If I go, he will come. That means it's a conditional class, condition. I have to go, otherwise he won't come. So if you're telling me this is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit was there in the book of John. Jesus said, I, by the power of the Spirit, cast out devil. And he said, if you go and do any mission, mission and healing, it's not you that do the work, it is the Spirit in you. So that particular Spirit is there. But this is the special Spirit. He said, if I go, he will come. And if he come, he will reprove the world and talk about sin and righteousness. And he will elevate me. And whatever he says, it will be spoken to him by God Almighty. And that is Muhammad. Oh, I to go under the hawa. Whatever Muhammad said, God spoke to him. So this, to us Muslim, is a human being. And today, if you go to Mecca, you go to Medina, you go to the tomb of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Medina. It says, La ilaha illallah, al-malikul haqqum mubin, Muhammadur Rasulullah, as-sadukul wa'adul amin. There's no God but Allah. Muhammad as-sadukul wa'adul amin. The spirited prophet, a faithful prophet, this name was given to him by the enemies long before he was even commissioned to become a prophet of God. Mm -hmm. So definitely, clearly, Jesus is speaking about a human being, and that human being is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What makes Islam superior over all the other religions? Uh, well, the spirit of Islam uh, is what exactly what, uh, what God has said. In the quotation I've just quoted, Allah said to uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ittabi u Ibrahim Hanifa. Oh Muhammad, follow the way of Muhammad, he's an, uh, of, of, of Ibrahim, he's an upright person. Elsewhere, Allah also said, Makana Ibrahim Kana Hanifa Muslim. Abraham is not a Jew, nor was he a Christian, but he's an upright person who followed the will of Allah. And so if I look at how Abraham prayed, I look in the book of Genesis, Genesis 17, verse 3. It says, And Abraham fell on his face and he prayed to the, uh, to the Lord Almighty. And look at the book of Genesis 41, verse 30. It says, And Moses and Aaron and the son of Aaron, Eliza, put water at the entrance of the tabernacle and they washed their hands and their feet before entering in the temple and they bowed down with their head to the ground and worshipped the Lord. If I look at the book of Joshua chapter 14 verse 15, it says, And Joshua, the man of the Lord, took the shoe from his feet and went further and fell on his face to the ground and he worshipped the Lord. If I look at the book of John, uh, Matthew, uh, uh, Matthew 26, 39, and Jesus went a little further and he fell on his face and he prayed. If I look, look. That's how Jesus prayed, that's how Moses prayed, that's how Abraham prayed, that's why all of them, that's how they pray. So Islam is, in fact, the last culmination of the revelation given by Allah to, uh, to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because all of them are the same. They all brought the same thing. Because Allah said, uh, 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 there is not a single community, but the messenger has passed through them. It be, um, mm -hmm. There is not a community, but, you know, the one has passed through them. And then Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, this world will never end. This world, no matter anywhere that the sun will set on this globe, mm -hmm. Islam will reach there. Mm -hmm. And that will be the insurgence of Islam. So Islam clearly is taken over. If you look at the fastest growing religion today, it's Islam. Mm -hmm. In Germany, in France, in Europe, in Africa, everywhere you go. Religious Digest 2019, they say Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. ABC News, everywhere, everybody. And it's been there for quite a long time. So Islam really, in fact, is a religion that Allah has proclaimed for Roma, inshallah. Okay, Shaq, um Someone was asking on the question. Right. Uh, alaikum. If you are here, make sure you share this program. If you have a question, you can type your question on the comment button. Inshallah, I will read the question for the Sheikh. Inshallah. There is one question that person says, Who is a Muslim? No. Yeah, that's the question. The who question is, is Who is a Muslim? Uh, Islam is the religion. It's a mechanical name. Islam is a religion. A Muslim is someone who subscribes to you know, uh, uh, Islam. And if you are a Muslim, that means you believe in the five pillars of Allah, uh, uh, the five pillars, Islam, and the sixth arkan al Islam. Once you believe in all that, you are a Muslim. Anyone who submits himself entirely to the will of God without associating any partner, then you, you become a Muslim. Simple as that. Oh, okay. Now, uh, Jack, as you can see right now, uh, make sure you share this program to all your friends on your page, in your account on Facebook, and everywhere. Invite your friends, inshallah. If you have any question. Make sure you type it on the comments section. Inshallah, I'll read it for Sheikh. Sheikh, uh, there's um, some people, they call themselves common sense. Right. Common sense. So what is the aim of those common sense? Like, I know you've been meeting a lot of 
atheism and all this. What, what they mean by common sense? Can mm -hmm. Islam go with common sense or no? No. Uh, you can't uh, worship Allah using your common sense. Because everybody has sense, but at the same time, everybody has different understanding. So if you say you're going to use uh, the common sense to worship Allah, uh, you can't even tap into the sensory of your brain to go deep beyond your common sense. You're going to be rich in this world 80 years, 90 years, you're going to be old. And you begin to forget something, uh, Alzheimer's. So the sense itself is not you know, uh, infinite. So you can use common sense to uh, delve deep into the process of getting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only way is to send a prophet and messengers and books. And that's what Allah did. So he sent us Torah, Gospel, Quran, Suhoof, and all this kind of thing. So we have different people today. We have agnostic, those who say God exists, but you know, he is very hard to get him. Then we have Noxtis. They also say God exists. He created everything, but then he removed himself from his own creation. Then we have Nihilists. Nihilists are those who think that um, they can, you know, there's, there is no God, there's no God at all. Nihilists. So if you are a common sense person and you say God does not exist, well then you are a nihilist. And a nihilist is someone who doesn't believe in anything about God. But what I'm saying is that the fact that you exist is a proof that God exists. Nothing exists by itself without the primary mover. The sun cannot exist without someone making it to exist. You know, if you look at the heaven example, it gives you an idea for you to believe that God exists. We have over 100 billion trillion galaxies moving at the speed of light. The speed of light is 186.3 thousand miles per second. They don't collide. They don't crush. They're all moving in their path. That in itself proves that God exists. If you look at the DNA in our system, over 100 billion genome of DNA in our system, each and every one of them is moving to do specific work. How can nature create something that is so intricate? That nature is God. Because he is the ultimate creator who would make everything to function, the sun, the moon, the rain, the stars. Because nature cannot coordinate this intricate, capacitated creation. Nature does not have that consciousness. So those who call themselves common sense family, they could call themselves whatever name they want. But the common sense is for anyone to realize that God exists by, by, by just looking at his environment. And maybe you could get that understanding. So, sir, can someone who has a who says they are using their common sense mm. to talk about God, mm. can they debate with people who has their books like common sense? Some of them they don't have a books; they're using their own common sense. Right. But can they debate with people who has a books like, let's say, Christians right. or Muslims or Buddhism or uh, what do you call it? Uh, 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 Jewish, right. they have a books. Hindu and stuff. Hindu and all that, they have a books. Right. So can common sense person mm. debate with this type of people? Because those common sense people, they don't have no books that they want to use the book to uh, to tell people. Because that books, it comes from God. Mm. And they don't have that. But they are using their own common sense. Can they work with it? Alifa, absolutely, it's not going to work. I mean, we nearly made those kind of mistakes. You know, we are all human beings. We fall a little bit. But I was prompted and later when I did my... You know, understand that I realized that it is absolutely impossible for anyone that claims to have common sense and is going to use that medium to debate someone with the Torah, someone with the Injil, Gospel, someone with the Quran, someone with the Bhagavad Gita, and all these kind of books that God has given to earlier prophets. It is absolutely impossible because the common sense person does not have any book to stand upon and debate. And so, how can, where are we going to start the debate? How, where, when? I mean, it, does, it just cannot be. You have to have something that I can debate upon. As opposed to having nothing and you want to debate me, you know, it's, it's like it's like it's like uh, an an elephant having a dialogue with a rat. That is not possible. So clearly, to me, to my understanding, it doesn't hold water, inshallah. So do God have books? Yes. Do God have books? Yeah. Like a Quran, Bible, right. and all that. Right. Do, is it directly coming from God? Yes. The Bible, right. the Quran, okay. the Torah, right. and all that. Right. Is it directly coming from God or not? Okay, absolutely. Um, we were told in the Quran that To each and every community, Allah has sent a messenger and a guide. And the messenger comes along and he himself, his life is the culmination of what he was revealed by God to. For example, Moses was given the Torah. The Torah means law. It means law. And that law was that which 
enshrined in the five books of Moses, meant for the Bani Israel. It is a revelation by God Almighty. We're talking about the original Torah given to Moses by God Almighty. This comes direct from where we call Lohil Mahfuz, the preserved tablet. Those are the fountainhead of knowledge where Allah drives information through the angel Gabriel to the subsequent prophet to solve their problem or at, at the time that the book was given. Then we have the Injil, then we have the Suhu, then we have the Quran, which is the last book. The Quran encapsulates all fiber of life. Allah said in the Quran, There is nothing that we have not explained in this Quran for, the, for, for you, mankind, as you live on earth. So yes, all the books that were given by Allah to the prophet is a direct revelation. No one can go and make any changes. Even the angels cannot make any changes. Taught by one who is mighty in power. Yes. So, sir, uh, can uh, a person use uh, translation of Quran or transliteration? No. Use it, can the common sense use that mm -hmm. to, you know, to talk about Islam? Translation or no. transliteration or something like All that? All right. Mostly they use the translation, and it's very unfortunate. Translation is the direct language of the writer or the person who is translating. His understanding of the Quranic text, that's what he write down. That is his word. That is his translation. I will do the same translation, but I will use different language. I will use different words, a different key point. So translation is not the Quran. It is an, it, it, it is an effort by the translator to give us an idea of what the Arabic text is. The Arabic text, which is the Mus'haf, that is the original book, it can never be equated with the translation. So if anyone is starting upon translation to um, use that as a basis of his knowledge of Islam, really is funny. Besides, there is, there is Asbabun Nuzul. Each and every verse in the Quran have a reason why it came down. It's a sign that people study as Babu Nuzul. In which situation was the Messenger Muhammad? Why was this verse revealed and all that? Is this a big sign? It takes about 20 years to educate yourself more into all these things. So you can't just grab a book in translation by anybody, any Tom Dick and Harry and say, I'm going to debate Muslim because, because in Quran says this and that in English. No, 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 no. The Arabic is the text. You should be speaking Arabic to understand what the Quran is all So about. in that translation, they have a different kind of uh, translation. Yes, we have different translation, different translation. The wording are different. That could different because yours is different, mine is different, his is different. That's our understanding. You know, but the basic theme is the same. But the original Quran is free from, you know, human manipulation, subtraction, addition. That is the pure Quranic that Allah is talking about. Translation, we are trying to explain what the Quran actually is. So we have different translation, and that is not the Quran. The Quran is the real Arabic text. Now, like my next question is, uh, how can the Muslims invite now. people to da'wah? Masha Allah, Haya Rifa, you are doing the right thing. What you are doing, really, what we see all the time, and we raise our tongue for you, is dawah. I mean, you come along and you present Islam, you comport yourself and use the basic, you know, uh, uh, approach of Islam, like you do all the time. Everybody see. I'm not saying this. Everybody's watching what you do, and that is dawah also. Dawah's methodology is different, 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 different. But Allah gave us a central, you know, a, a, a unique pattern to follow for dawah. And Allah said in the Quran, Invite them all to the way of Allah with wisdom. And beautiful words. Wisdom and beautiful speech. You can't invite them by insulting them, calling them names, and cursing them. That is not the way. You invite them beautifully using the bodily signs that Allah has given you, juxtaposed with the methodology of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa People will accept it naturally because Allah has sucked in the people Already they are willing to accept Islam if we use the best methodology. There's something called fitra. Fitra is the natural inborn mechanism that Allah has set forth in each and every human being to realize the word of Allah. Once we use that, Allah will, people will accept Islam. Now. Uh, there's a question from a CSF family. Okay. He says, what, what is the proof that Quran is from the Creator? What is the proof? What is the proof that the Quran is from the Creator? Right. Read it. If you said this, this thing is not good, it's a fake, well, before you decide, before you know it's a fake, you have to open it, decipher it, look at it, then you know. But if you don't read the Quran in Arabic, the word themselves, you look at the key points, something that point to the ones of Allah. It doesn't talk about Muhammad, it doesn't talk about anybody but Allah. Muhammad could have said, I wrote the Quran, but he said, no, 
in huwa illa wa khayyin yuha is Allah who has given that to me. And today, the fastest growing religion in the world is Islam. And most of the information that science are talking about has been mentioned in the Quran over 1,400 years ago. It is utterly impossible for any human being to make those statements. There is a man in France by the name Maurice Bukai. He wrote a book. The book's name is, um, you know, uh, 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 the Quran, the Bible, and science. In that book, he said, the Quran have presented a genuine challenge to mankind, leaving only one alternative, that this Quran must be from God Almighty. And they ask him why. He said, because the information in the Quran is so consistent with modern science that it is impossible for anyone living in the 7th century to be able to write this book. And then we have Albert Einstein, one of the best men in the 19th century. He died, and his, his brain is here. Einstein Hospital in New York City here. His brain is dead. In his last you know, memoir, he said, at last, we have found the quantum that whosoever created the heaven and earth is a great mathematician. They asked him why. He said, because everything moves in perfectly, you know, like a, like a hand glove. It fits in so perfectly that uh, it cannot happen by chance. And the Quran have given us all this information. There is no time I would have given you a lot of science to prove that what I'm saying is factual based upon the scientific research and finding inshallah. Okay, so he said just because uh, say the angel Gabriel came to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, yes, and no one was there, right? But the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said Gabriel came to him and gave him the Quran, and no one's there, right? But now we don't even see the angels anymore. So right. do you have anything to say about this? Okay, the angels come. We don't see the angels, but they come. How does angels work? Today I give you an example. If you know a bat, a bat. A bat can communicate with another bat over 25 miles away by emitting certain sound, either low or high frequency that you and I cannot understand. It's giving information. And that bat who is over 25 uh, miles away can understand what this bat is saying. But you and I cannot understand. This is a form of revelation. A dog can be given a shirt of a criminal, smell it, and then leave the dog into population of many people. The dog, by smelling, would go deep into the anus of the population and he will get the culprit. Because the sense perception of the dog is so much powerful than ours. The same thing applies to the angels. They could come and sit here talking to me or talking to you. But the next person could not hear. This is a miraculous way of departing or imparting knowledge by God Almighty. So prophet, if he says to prophet, Analyze him. Look at the book. Look at his life. Look at the people. Look at what he's saying. Use your body sense and God-given mental powers. You will come to conclusion. And many, many, many intellectuals are returning to Islam because of the information in the Quran. It proved that it came from God Almighty. Now, okay, sir, uh, you just came back from Ghana. Yes, I did. You see the way in Ghana now are there is right. how some pastors right. and some malams yeah. are doing dawah or right. preaching in church, right. and some. Even Muslims preaching in the um, masjid. Yes. Let's just break it down first. Mm. If you watch the way when you go to Ghana, you could see a pastor. Mm. Uh, the way they preach right. in the church, you mm. could see a pastor even stamping on people's yes. neck, head, and all mm. that. Some of them were arrested, and mm. the way they are doing. Mm. Is that the teaching of Jesus Christ? Well, Jesus Christ didn't do a thing like that. And there is no evidence that he did. Because based upon Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, Jesus said, by the fruit you shall know them. By the way they do their act, you shall know them. And Jesus also said, for there shall arise many false prophets and false Christ, and they will show you many great wonders and signs. If possible, they will deceive my elected people. Jesus said that. So there's going to be all these people who are stamping on the female and beating them up and dancing and all. Jesus didn't do any of those things. But this is the end time. All these things have been prophesied by Jesus Christ. But towards the end of time, all these things are going to happen. And he make mention in the book of John or Matthew chapter 7 verse 21, Jesus said, These people, uh, not all those who call me Lord, Lord, will enter heaven. But those who do the will of God, they will enter heaven. And we know Islam is the will of God. And Jesus continued by saying, On that day, in his second coming, many will come to me saying to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? In your name we cast out devil. In your name we do so many mighty miracles. And Jesus said, get away from me. I don't know you. You evil doers who worship me for nothing. Clearly, he's talking to those end prophets of today who are, you know, I don't know why, what motivates them to be doing whatever they're doing. And people seem to believe them. Guidance came from God Almighty. It's not a human being. It's yes, like when you came to, when you went to Ghana, you could see when you are driving in from Accra Road to Kumasi, right. Right. you see a signboard. Right. Some people, they call themselves Mala. 
Right. And they will put like a snake, like right. some thing that they hold. Absolutely. They put the malam. They are called a soupsayers. Soupsayers. Soupsayers or yeah. whatever, or buka, we call the malam mabuka. Right. Is that the teaching of the Prophet Muhammad? Absolutely, absolutely ground zero for that. This is sure. Back in the days, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, if you do this like this, man, you could do that somewhere. They're going to beat you up. They're going to kick you out of the community. But today, the world has changed. People are coming boldly on television, on radio, like you said, having billboards with calabash and holding tasbir. They are talking about if you have a problem of money, of children, of wife, of going to America, of going to wherever, come to me. Who are you that you want to give all this thing? Look. Allah does not need all this kind of stuff. People are doing it because of their own whimsical ideas and looking for financial gain. Allah says, They have said in the word of Allah so they could make miserable, cheap money. This is haram, un-Islamic, is absolutely, doesn't come closer to Islam. This is a lie that they are telling people and they're making a lot of money. Islam doesn't agree with that. No. How do Jesus Christ pray no. according to Bible? According How to do Bible. Jesus Christ pray? According to the Bible, the only way we know that Jesus prayed, in the book of John chapter 20, he used water and he put a cloth around his neck and he washed Peter's ha hand and he washed John's face. And Peter said, Master, see to it that you wash my leg also. Jesus said, see to it that whatever I'm showing you, you show it to the other people because it will be done towards the end of time. And we see in the book of Matthew 26, 39, and Jesus went a little further and he fell on his face and he prayed. And he said, Oh my father, again, the book of Mark 14, 35, Jesus said, Abba, Abba, I know that all things are possible with thee. And he went and fall with his face to the ground. In the book of Luke 22, 39 to 41, it says, And are ye even yet without understanding sleeping? And Jesus went back and fall on his face to the ground and worshiped the Lord. Worship the Lord. Most, all of them, that's how they did. Jesus never danced. I wouldn't dance. <laughs> it's funny to see a shake like me <laughs> dancing. dancing. This, oh, subhanAllah, look at this shake. But you see people dancing and women and men and oh my goodness. This is not what Abraham did. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Nehemiah, John the Baptist, Jesus, Habakkuk. None of them did all these things. This is something that they do so that they will incite the people. But absolutely, Jesus worshiped the way the Muslim worship. And before he does that, he washes hands and his face. Now, so Sheik, uh, it's Jesus. Now, God. Now, is Jesus God? How can Jesus be God when He Himself said, "I'm not God"? In can the book of us a quotation? in the book of John, chapter seventeen, verse uh, chapter, chapter seventeen, verse three, Jesus said, uh, "This is life eternal. The only one true God and Jesus Christ, whom Thou have sent." In the book of John, chapter five, verse thirty, Jesus said, "I can of my own self do nothing. The way I hear, I judge, and my judgment is good because I don't do things out of myself, but it's the Father who taught me." In the book of John, chapter 14, verse 28, Jesus said, My Father is greater than I. My Father is greater than all. If you believe in me, it is not me that you believe. It is the Father that believes because he is the one that sent me. In the book of Mark 13, 34, Jesus said, Of that day, the day of judgment, and that hour, no one know, not the angels, not even Jesus the Son, but the Father only know. So how can God doesn't know the day of judgment? How? How, how, common sense, how, how, how. So clearly, there are just so many verses, I, I don't want to bother you with so many verses, I can give you thousands of them, that Jesus clearly showed that he's not God Almighty, yes now. Okay, Shaq, so Jesus, is he a son of God? The son of God is a language that the Jewish use. They don't mean physical son. Like in the book of uh, 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 Exodus, God said, I will, and, and I, will make, I will make Moses a God. Look, oh, I will make Moses a God, and his brother Aaron shall be his prophet. In the book of Genesis, the 4 verse 22, it says, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Who is Israel? Jacob. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 9 verse 30, it says, Israel is my son, and Ephraim is my firstborn. In the book of Chronicles, it says, He will build a house for me, and I will become his God, and he will become my son. In the book of Solomon, Psalms of David, chapter 2 verse 7, and David said, and I will declare the glory. The Lord hath said unto me, David, thou art my son. This day I have begotten thee. So the word son was used to show the closeness of the prophet and the messenger. Oh, the son of God. In Hausa, it doesn't mean God beget him. That means he's a godly person. Yeah, he's a good person. Sometimes we say, it doesn't mean Shaitan begets him, but we use his quality, his adjective to describe his bad thing that he do. Ah, I bow Allah, I don't Allah. 
it doesn't mean God. So this is the Son of God, the Jewish. They don't use that as a son. The Christian, because of the, the mentality of the pagan rituals, they make it to become the physical son. But no, God does not have a son because he doesn't have a wife. Okay, Shaq, uh, there's a one question says, yeah. if we the Muslims mm. believe in the Bible, right. why don't we taught Bible in our Makaranta? We believe in, we don't even believe in the Bible. Let me make some correction. Okay. There is not a single place in the Quran or the Sunnah or Hadith or any book by any Islamic scholar regarding the Bible. The Quran never mentioned the Bible. The, the Hadith never mentioned the Bible. What they mention is Injil. Mm. The Injil, in Arabic it means good news. In English it also means good news. In, in Greek it means Evangel, good news. That is what we know was given to Jesus, not the Bible. And we know Torah, a Torah or Tanakh was given to Moses. But these books are not here with us. Because Jesus never wrote down his book. It comes to him and he preached it after he died. I'm sorry, he didn't die. I'm so saying, I'm sorry, I'm just making I'm sorry, it. he disappeared. After, after, he he after he left the earth, after he left the earth, 80 years after he left the earth, the first book was written, the book of Mark. And Mark was not a disciple of Jesus. Mm. Then, 120 years, the book of Matthew was written. So how could that be? Matthew was, wrote his book 120 years, and if you look at the internal evidence, it proves that Matthew did not write the book of Matthew. Why did I say that? The book of Matthew, chapter 9, verse 9, it says, listen to the English it said, and tell me if Matthew wrote the book. It says, while he, Jesus, was going out on the way, he saw a man sitting on the tax collector's table, and Jesus said to him, follow me, and Matthew rose and followed him. How could this be the word of Matthew? Somebody else was writing the book. Mm. Luke was not a disciple of Jesus. He's never seen Jesus Christ with his own eye. Mm. Luke had never seen him. Mark was not a disciple of Jesus. Paul was not a disciple of Jesus. We don't even know if this John they're talking about is the real John because the book of John is talking about pagan eating blood and sacrifice. It doesn't look like a Jewish book. So clearly this book was written long after Christ left the earth. The original books, we believe in that. In the Bible proved that it has been changed. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 8, it says about the books have been changing just like the Quran said. It says, do you think that we have the law of Moses and the other prophets in our hands still? No. The book, the hand of those who write the books have turned it into a lie. That means the Bible is telling me and you that the books have been changed. And the Quran confirmed, to the end of the ayah. It's a war unto those who write the books with their own hand. And then they make some money out of it. Woe to the hand that write it and woe to the benefit they make out of it. That is why the Quran have to come clean, pure, unadult I mean unadulterated from the fountainhead of Allah's knowledge, preserved in the mind and heart of the people up till today. Mm. You cannot change the Quran. You just cannot change it because we have memorized it millions all over the world. No book have got that distinction of memorization except the Quran, inshallah. Yeah. Okay, Sheikh, uh, we have somebody I checked from. He said, do we have, do we have Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam name in the Bible and which part of the Bible? Uh, Allah said, "Allazina yatabi'una Rasul al-Nabi al-Ummiya al-Nazi yajidu nahu maktuban in the Holy Torah." Those who found, those who followed the Prophet Muhammad, because they have found his name written in their books. I'm going to give you few, and I'm going to give you few verses that will link you to Muhammad. Let's look at the book of Isaiah, 29 verse 12. For example, we know that Muhammad was in the cave, and the angels came and told to him. Ikra'a, Muhammad said, I cannot, ma'ana uh, rikari, I cannot read. The angel said, Ikra'a, ya Muhammad. Muhammad said, I cannot read. It means, read. Muhammad said, I cannot read. This information is, is, is Islamic information, but it is found in the book of Isaiah 29, verse 12. It reads, and the book was given to him who is not learned, and they asked him to read, and he said, I cannot read. Who is that? Which prophet has ever been given a book to read and he said, I cannot read? In the book of Solomon, chapter uh, chapter 16, this, uh, chapter, chapter, chapter 16, I'm sorry, at, yeah, Philippians 16, it says, I'm going to read that in English. It says, his mouth is beautiful. His skin is like that of the Lebanese. He is altogether beautiful. He is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. But this is English. But if you look at the Hebrew language, it says, Hiko, Hiko, Mamitatem, Fikulu, Zahudin, Muhammadim, Vazamarai, Bainayahushala. 
Muhammad in is mentioned in their books. That's why Allah said, Maktuban. His name is written in there. Taurat wal Injil. Muhammad's name is written in there. And even the Kaaba is mentioned in their Quran. Who is going to Kaaba? Us. If you look at the book of Isaiah, chapter 2, verse 2, it says, There will be a temple of the Lord built in the desert on the mountain. And that temple will be the greatest of all temples in the world. And nations will come to that temple and worship the one God. They will go around it. Which temple is that? This is Kaaba. So there are just so many, 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 many of Muhammad mentioned in the Bible. But you read that in English, you can never see that. If you get the original book in Hebrew, that's when you see the Muhammad mentioned in their book. But even today with the English, we can, we can still agree that Muhammad is mentioned in, 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 in the Bible, inshallah. So as as you can see, um, there's a couple times when you were in Ghana. Yes. There was going to be a debate between you and... A, a guy called Abraham yes. and we were able the ulama and us we called you and we explained something to you and right. then the debate went off right so what can you tell people right. about this because some people were asking me yes um I know people are going to be asking some are disappointed and some are not disappointed and uh, different ideas and ideology of course for, uh, for the first time I've been receiving information from people all over the world for many many years that I should come and stop this guy Abraham he's, 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 he's bubbling his mouth all over the place about the Quran about the common sense and that so I didn't pay no mind because I was busy up and I was busy all over traveling and this stuff so when I came this time guys came to me and he said there is this guy Sheikh since you are here we have to do this and that I said man I don't know this guy I don't do debate just like that so the guy was forcing they are calling they are calling me you know, one day they came and it's okay we Sheikh, please, since we have time, this is the COVID-19, nobody's going anywhere, we could do it on, even in the studio, this and that. So I said, okay, well, the mistake I did was I should have consulted you, because we have, we, we, you know, we have a pact that I'm going to consult you, because you are the one that knows a lot more than I, in terms of these bloggers and stuff. So I didn't do that, but later you heard that I was going to do it, I agree. There is a guy on TV, I, what's his name again? Kofi TV. Kofi TV. Okay. And Kofi TV, he called me uh, through another guy, he said, okay, I'm going to fix you guys. So they fixed, they, 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 they. They, they say, okay, Sheikh, which topic? I said, look, he, let, let him take any topic. I, I don't give topic if I'm doing today. I will let you, because I don't want, I, I know what I know. So you take the topic. I'm not going to give so that one, because, okay, well, you have said the topic before you come. No, you pick the topic. So finally they agree. I said, okay, since you don't believe in God Almighty, you don't believe in the Quran, you don't believe in Muhammad, would you like to talk about the Quran or Muhammad or anything about Revelation? Then we agree finally through with Kofi and him that uh, we're talking about the, the, is the Quran, the word of God, or divine, something like that. I say, okay, no problem. I don't have any problem with that. So then now we have to talk about the, which language are we going to use for this debate? So he, I think Abraham guy, you know, he said, uh, Chi. I said, look, I don't speak Chi very well. I, I do understand, but I can't, I can't, you know, I can't debate with it. Yeah. I'm not comfortable using that word. I'm from Cape Coast, but I can't even uh, debate in Fanti. Yeah. I can't. I'm used in English because I've been talking like this for quite a long time. You want to debate in English? Fine. Because my audience, they don't, they don't speak no Fanti. They all over the world. They don't speak no Fanti. Yeah. And he is telling me that Abraham said most of his audience are tree-speaking people. Okay. So if we speak English, they're going to get lost. I mean, they're not going to understand. I said, okay, fine. Then you have to find a way because I cannot speak that key and you can't speak English. And he said, okay, he's going to talk with his, uh, his people okay. and come to conclusion as to which language should you speak. I said, look, I've given you my word. If not English, I'm not going to speak. After we did that, the following day we were supposed to meet on WhatsApp. That's when you came in. Okay, okay, that's when I that's came you give me all the yeah, numbers. Because when I came in, uh, the, the organizers, he knows right. me very well. Right. He called me and he said, Okay, there's a debate between Sheikh and him. Who was that? Uh, this, no, 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 no. Oh, okay. There's one brother, he's, right. he, he lives in Ghana. Okay. So that's what he told me. Now mm. I said, Okay, I'll look it up. Mm. But I didn't pay <laughs> it to it. Right. But when I left home, right. later on, Malam Elias let the Bible speak. I know. He called me many people From everywhere. Germany. Uh, Malan Elias called me. From uh, Saudi Arabia. Malan, uh, what do you call it? Sana from Germany he called I was, me. I was scared. Malan man. Nasiru Albani from New York called me. Was calling. A lot of people yeah. all over the place. Alifa. Yeah. Stop Sheikh. Malan Fridaus Ladam. Everyone yeah. is calling. Alifa. 
Stop this debate with Sheikh Mohammed Awal. Who yeah. did that? I said, okay, there's a certain guy did it, not yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know anything about it. They think it. you did it, though. They thought I was... <laughs> they know I, I, so that is when I yeah. called you. I said, Sheikh, right. this debate must start because this guy is yeah. a Facebook blogger. Yeah. He's not knowledgeable like the like, way... Yeah. Like, it's just with Facebook bloggers. Mm. Some of them uses... Mm. People mm. to go on YouTube and mm. Facebook and make money. And make a lot of yeah. yeah because when you debate with him, he's not there to. I mean, he's That's not here to learn. He just want to make he's, money. He created a movement. Okay. Anybody who created a movement is not going to stop his movement. Absolutely. He already said it on video. He said, "I created a movement. I'm not stopping. Nobody can stop mm. me." So if nobody can stop you, why should we waste our time to debate you? We don't want to debate you, but we will teach people mm. on social media Absolutely. for people to understand. Mm. Nobody can stop anybody from uh, for guidance. That's Allah true. says in the Quran, mm. uh, Allah is the Allah guidance. Allah Allah. Nobody can guide anyone. Allah Allah. Allah Allah. Just last week, some, one of them came to Moro mm. and he accepted Islam from them. So that is why I told I said, okay, this guy is there to make money on YouTube and Facebook. Yeah, so you stop. Muslims should not even pay it to him. Mm. And what I think the best thing is no debate. Yes. And I call you Sheikh. Yeah. And Sheikh, you accepted it. No debate. Yeah. Not me alone. Yeah. Sheikh Lutfi. Lutfi. Sheikh Lutfi is the, 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 uh, the deputy chief imam of Al Sunnah al Jamaa. Yes. He called you. Yeah. Many people. A called lot of people ask us, Subhanallah. They said, Sheikh, stop it, stop it, don't do it. Listen to what I never said. I said okay. But Sheikh, there are many. Some of the Muslim brothers, they yeah. they get mad at me. Oh, Alifa, <laughs> why did you stop the debate? So Sheikh, <laughs> is he? Am I the only no, one no, who no. called you? Well, like thousands of scholars all over the world, from Japan, from Germany, from France, from Canada, from United States. From Ghana, everywhere, from Nigeria, they said, Sheikh, don't even think about it because you are going to lower yourself. That's what they told me. So later, after all what I heard, I went and looked up on this guy. But that was the first time I looked at him and I was like, what? Thank <laughs> God I didn't debate this guy because what I'm here exactly. for him, definitely, you know, uh, no. He's no. not ready to learn. He says, he, I created a movement. Mm. The movement he created, that's YouTube, mm. money. Mm. And then Facebook money. That is where he got his money. And Halifa, do you know, since I started my Facebook, man, we started when there was no Twitter, no, no nothing. And we do it for free for Facebook. <laughs> After today, I never received one peso because I don't want it. Yes. I don't want to dilute my mission exactly. with money. What lie? I could make millions I know. on YouTube, but what lie? I never, I don't even like it. I don't even, I remember so when I, you went to Arch. Yeah. And YouTube, <laughs> pop up the whole YouTube. Millions. millions. And then people yes. calling you to give me money. I remember. Yeah, in downtown. Yes. They called me to come and sit down with them, YouTube. But I realized they're going to give me money. I said, okay, if I take this money, no. So my conscience doesn't allow me to accept money because of what I'm doing. Exactly. That means I'm neutralizing the word of God. Exactly. Make money. So I, I, don't, I don't touch it. I don't exactly. Touch it. Even now, uh, if you could look at uh, Peace Dower Media, we have a lot of projects doing in Ghana like uh, oh, blind, blind Muslims. Oh, so the you Facebook now, when we show some I videos and people uh, follow, if you they give money, the money to the blind Muslims, not me. Uh, if, uh, if you want to make money, you, you become billionaire. By I know. From, from what you're doing and from <laughs> whatever you're saying. We admire that. Exactly. So it's not good to neutralize our. So he's not ready to learn, and we, we, we said no more debate, no nothing. But if you, if what, you want to learn, we always give him. What if, if he has he, a question, bring it and we answer you. Arifa, what if the Abraham guy? What if he have changed his mind and he have a religion and he wanna he wanna have a dialogue with us? Is that okay? Exactly. If he has a religion, we have a religion. We have he say, okay, I'm a Christian now. Okay. He say, if he says he's a Christian, or a he has a Bible, or he says he's a Jew. Oh. If he says he's a Jew, then we, can we will debate him. Use if he form. says he's a Christian, we will debate him. Yeah. Only if he has a book to yeah. debate, but not to use only common no. sense. Because no. common sense, even my daughter can use common sense <laughs> to talk about something. <laughs> okay, Jack, let's no. well, forget about this. We just clarify there's some... Mm. Uh, let's see. So, Jack, how, what are you going to tell the Muslim brothers mm. who are following this type of people? Atheisms and all this type of common sense. What are you going to tell them, Muslim brothers? Well, it's very unfortunate that um, the the is this is what we call globalization. 
I mean, that's why it's very good to research. If you don't research about all this ideology that is going on, definitely you're going to fall into some kind of idea. These people are very good in beautiful rhetoric. They speak so beautifully like flowers, man. They give you ideas and ideologies, and before you realize, they have brainwashed you, and you fall into you know, a very myotic situation. And so my young students, young Muslims who are growing up, Wallahi, you should be very, very careful. Anything that you listen, you have to verify it. Make sure you know where it's coming from and where is that coming from. The Quran is a catalyst. Around the Quran, centered all the information and the knowledge that you need is in the Quran. So I don't think it's very fair for you, as after you, I mean, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are spiritually grown up as a Muslim, and all of a sudden now you're going to follow atheism, all of a sudden ideology, thisism. No, this will be this. The messenger said there's going to be a lot of this thing at the end of the time. So you have to be careful. A Muslim will start being a Muslim, but towards the end of time, he will become something else and he will end up in fire. Somebody will be in, uh, doing bad stuff, towards the end, he will become a Muslim. So don't be careful you hold on to the Quran, hold on to the Sunnah, hold on to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah himself, he told Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Oh Muhammad, be on your right track, the way I'm showing you. Don't deviate. Not only you, those who will come after you, tell them don't deviate, hold on to this way of life with their teeth like a dog holding the bone. Don't deviate because you hear a lot of things and you see a lot of things, it will try to deviate you. Don't deviate. Be on that because you are on the right track. Rosh what are you going to tell about Zaytun Dawa Institute International Store that you yes. have International um, Store? Haliba, you know, what I want to do, because no. I've been doing the, our, you know I've been doing this thing for the past 25 years. I don't get paid, I don't do anything. And Alhamdulillah, I lead so comfortably i'm doing okay but sometimes we travel like we travel so much and we go so far sometimes we go in droves and we need to go to hotel we gotta eat we gotta move we gotta buy some gas in our car Halifa. sometimes i use all my money and those who help me once in a while i get shy to go ask them to help me and this job you can't do that without some kind of assistant and i'm not I, you know so what i did, did that instead of asking people to um to give me money i feel shy i'm so very shy to ask somebody to give me so what i did is we opened a store you know and that store we sell our hats we sell our t-shirt we sell our books we sell some artifacts all you do is to buy whatever the proceed we will use that for that hour that's it and that's why we come up with the idea of our zaitun the our store just go and buy the t-shirt and you get blessings from supporting the cost of that hour you know it's very simple. Inshallah. So it's Zaytun. Uh, okay, I think Zaytun. the link. The link is. The link is. The link is. I saw him. The link is there. Shirt, the my my technical guys, they know how to tell It's more Zaytun than Dawa International Store. Yo, Zaytun wow. Dawa International Store. If you want to follow, uh, follow check to Zaytun Dawa Institute. Yes. Zaytun Dawa Institute. Mm -hmm. Inshallah. So when you go to um, Sheikh Mohammed Awal on mm -hmm. Facebook, mm -hmm. there's a number, there's everything that you need. You can send Sheikh messages and everything yes. uh, on, on that. And we have our Zaytun Dawa Institute WhatsApp group. Yes. You can also go there and we will also uh, add you on WhatsApp groups, yes. inshallah, yes. which where Sheikh normally puts a lot of uh, this thing. Inshallah. Uh, Sheikh, what is your last word, inshallah? Uh, uh, my now, inshallah. Last, Alhamdulillah, my last word is... Uh, First of all, it's going to jeer towards you, Alifa. Uh, when I went to Cape Coast, the, a group of young guys came to me uh, from Cape Coast. They know themselves, uh, Alaji Garba, um, Alaji Muhammad, another Alaji Muhammad, and uh, Alaji Baba. A lot of them, they came. They said, Sheikh, uh, we know that uh, you are very close to Halifa. Maybe one day if he comes to Ghana, we, we should bring him and, you know, uh, so we could greet him because he's doing a great job. So I'm praying for you and I'm praying that Allah should give you long life and health and money to be able to do all these things, to propagate the word of Allah because I can see clearly uh, Halifa is not doing it for money. In fact, you are using your own money as I'm telling my people. So look, he's using his own money to do this and that and this and that. That's a good daddy. So I make sure that I make dua for all those duas who are outside doing their best to propagate the word of Allah. Allah should give them long life. And the young boys also listen to the peers, listen to the scholars and act upon what they tell you because there is so much deception in this world. If you don't take care, you'll be deviated entirely, completely from the way of life of Islam. So may Allah make it easy for you, protect you, guide you, and give you the withstanding to continue this way of life, inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. Make sure you share this program, inshallah. We will check, we will check Muhammad. Our, this is the first interview, and inshallah, sometimes, 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 my maybe every three months, we will try our best to inshallah. meet Sheikh. Anytime you have any question, Anything that you are confused as a Muslim brother or a Christian and you are confused, you want us to clearly for you? We have our number, the Peace Dawa Media number is right there. 
Call us, contact us. We will give you with check, and the check will answer any any type of question for you, inshallah. So I'm gonna leave you up here. Make sure you share this program. Make sure you follow Peace Dawa Media YouTube page, Peace Dawa Media. Dot com. When you go to peacedourmedia.com, you will see everything there. Peace Dawa Media YouTube page. There is a lot of videos up there. When you go to Zaytun Dawa Institute, there is a lot of videos up there. You can go to Zaytun Dawa International In the, uh, Store. Zaytun Dawa International Store. You find a lot of resources up there. Inshallah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sallim. And inshallah, the, the whole lot of today, you will see a lot of programs. This is the first program with Sheikh Muhammad Awal. I'm right here in New York City. And you see a lot of programs downtown New York City. We're going to go in the Bronx, New York City. And we're going to meet up some chiefs. And it's a lot of programs for this week, inshallah, for today in New York City. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sallim.